I'm just doing a series of short videos at the minute just to give you an idea of the settings I use with the Canon 5D. Uh, most of the videos have been about the 5D on this channel um, and I hope you're enjoying them. If you do, please comment below. Ask any question you like. I know there's a lot of Canon 5D Mark I users out there now. Um, I'm selling quite a few at the moment. Um, they're harder to come by, but um, there's lots of videos on this channel. If this is the first one you've come across, then take a look. Now, I'm just going to talk about why I use manual mode in this video. Um, again, comment below the different setups you have. But the reason I use manual mode more than anything is because it simplifies the operation of the camera and it allows me to just stop thinking about settings at weddings. Now this is the opposite of what most people think. They think by using auto modes, AV, TV, I'm very opinionated about this one by the way, so this hopefully should get some comments below. Um, program. This in my opinion requires more thinking. Now obviously you may know or may not know I photographed a lot of weddings and I've used purely manual mode but for the first weddings I was actually in AV and if I just discuss that first wedding you'll understand why I swapped over pretty quick. So in AV mode um, say you're using the focus recompose technique um, so you half press the shutter use the center point recompose your photo. Now if the bride is, say, the center of attention, um, that's fine. But sometimes in the groups, you'll have, obviously, a groom in a black suit. And you'll usually have, you know, with the majority of my weddings, I always say a white wedding dress. So if you think about the metering system when I'm, I'm focusing, I've got to really try and expose in AV mode off mid-gray. Now... If you're using um, evaluative metering, maybe it's taking a meter reading across the whole lot. And it is pretty good. I'm not saying it's not. But where you come unstuck then is then you zoom in. Um, I use the 70 to 200 and the 24 105. And you'll zoom in and suddenly you've got a lot of white in the scene because you've zoomed in on the bride. And the exposure has been taken care of automatically. Well, that underexposes, and then I might zoom across to the groom and get a reaction photo of just the groom or one of the best men, whatever, and they're in a black suit. So your exposures are going up and down um, like crazy, and when you get them into Lightroom, you've generally got very little chance of batch processing. So quickly, and just to give you some idea of the time frame, it was 14 years ago, so Photoshop was just finishing, not finishing, that's a silly thing to say, but for photographers, they were moving on to Lightroom. So I moved on to Lightroom straight away, um, and the first version of Lightroom just came out, and I realized pretty quickly I was better off in manual mode so I could get a consistent exposure in batches. What I mean by that is I started dividing the wedding into scenes. So if you imagine the first scene not the first scene at a wedding, but the first scene to do with people might be the groom with three or four um, ushers and the best man, and they're just relaxing, and that might be your first scene. So what I would generally do then is I would walk in and I would set up 200, shutter speed, 5.6 aperture, and ISO 200. Now, for the average overcast sun behind the clouds type day and it's like that today in the UK that was my starting point for all my exposures so I wouldn't change exposure I'd set the scene um, and I'd photograph with a very similar background and it was just like doing scenes in a movie or scenes in a play whatever um, and that's how I learned to do very fast editing of weddings. It all started with this. So 200, 205.6. Then as the sun came out, the only thing I needed to do, or still do, and will do forever, is go to a thousandth. So if you imagine you're at 200th, um, that's taking care of a lot of motion in people, not emotion, motion. So when they're physically moving and mucking around, 
because they've just been down the pub <laughs> that takes care of that so as they move I'm not getting blurry images so if you imagine the light got better or what well generally it wouldn't get worse than that maybe it would maybe I'll go down to a hundredth at the worst but I would work in this range of one hundredth of a second mainly at two hundredth but one hundredth of a second all the way to a thousandth when it was full sun so my simple system and still is 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 just moving that so all day all as I'm doing exposure wise is setting the scene matching my shutter speed to the scene aperture very rarely changes outside it will go to f4 in dark churches um, I have to do that in a different video inside is a different scene but most of my outdoor scenes I'm just shifting from one hundredth of a second all the way to a thousandth now you'll get those real blue days and I appreciate um, you're around the world watching this so don't be surprised if you go up to a sixteen hundred so you know one two five oh is probably the maximum you will go to in the UK full sun mid-July so hopefully you can see, we're back the other way, because I have got a starting point, all as I'm really doing is just going either side of it and mainly going up. So what this helps you do, set the scene, choose your shutter speed, your aperture is fixed with this system. I appreciate, comment below, you're going to be saying I use f11, I do macro work, I use f22. I, I get that, believe me, but this will help you set up your own system. This is my system for doing weddings used for 14 years, like the equipment I'm using. And I just thought that would help you as a starting point. I teach everybody on the courses this and they can't believe it's so simple. When you're mucking around in AV and TV, I've got nothing against, I have got something against AV, a lot of different things, but maybe that's another video mainly in the UK and worldwide I can see everybody using AV um, when you move on to flash yeah I'm not my favorite thing at all TV where you fix the shutter speed and the rest of the camera um, maybe you fix the shutter speed and you set ISO um, maybe that's a workflow you can look at but I encourage you to miss all of them out put pieces of black tape over all of them and just work manually and just give it a go. Now you'll see AWB there and you're wondering, he's saying he's a full manual photographer and yet he used auto white balance. Um, for a time I did actually start, and there's other videos on the channel, go and look for the white balance one. I did use a gray card and I started fixing white balance, but I soon learned that Lightroom, the best way to approach this is to let the use raw and let the camera choose the white balance and sort it out later on. The main thing in camera is to get perfect exposure with the 5D Mark I and the majority of the Canons. Again, if you're watching this and you're a Nikon user, you'll think I'm crazy. You're underexposing by miles and then pulling all the detail back in Lightroom. But with these Canon cameras, especially these older ones, you want to be exposing to the right for the highlight um, that with the wedding dress, if you imagine that's the highlight, if I press play and play the image back, I just about get a flashing highlight. Um, and use a raw fly, fly, fly not a fly, use a file. Um, and then recover the highlights in Lightroom. And this was this really, you know, it's no secret now. If you go all over the internet, exposing to the right with the cannons and recovering the highlights produces lovely skin tones and also if you look into the eyes um, I haven't got that many images of mine up now I pulled down my site for this year because I'm having a break um, I'll probably be back on weddings 2020 or 2021 I think is the next bookings I've got but um, yeah I'm having a break this year so you won't see my website up but if I do put it some images up you'll notice when you look into the eyes people think I work on the eyes of my images and I don't I work manually I set the highlight, I actually produce quite a bright image using this technique and then I recover highlights only and the eyes, when you look into the eye, you know, literally into the sockets of the eyes, they're not dark. So working manually and exposing spot on, which is not hard once you get used to it, is what I do. There's no more to say. Um, I'm doing 
at the moment putting a full course together that's going to be downloadable. I'd appreciate your comments below in this video and just comment anywhere. If you go around all the videos, please put a comment in there and just ask me the questions. This is coming from someone that's put a lot of files through these cameras, including the 30D, 40D. I put a lot of files through that as well. Um, I know I know these cameras very well. This is not some tester who's gone from one camera to the next. So ask me the questions. Um, we will do some Lightroom stuff. Uh, I've got to get a better computer, to be honest, because mine's just absolutely had it at the moment. So let's try and do some. But ask questions about what to set and why I'm setting them, especially this aperture. We've got to do some videos about aperture. Completely misunderstood um, by the everybody. Well, I can't say that. That's so arrogant. But the internet, I call it, as in every YouTube video I watch, they're obsessed with this being f2 and buying prime lenses. But we'll talk about 5.6 at a later date. ISO 200 is absolutely brilliant on this camera. Just to give you an idea, moving inside. 800 ISO is extremely useful with flash, stroke 1000, um, lovely file. Moving on to 1600, I produce a lovely black and white that I really like out of that. Um, I'm using high and 3200 ISO in churches. Just give you my quick inside settings. I'm at a 60th, so I'm sucking that light in. I'm at, let me just unlock the aperture, must be, there we go. 60th at f4 and then I'm using the dreaded noisy apparently 3200 ISO file. Well the good news is Lightroom's come that far that you can clean that file up no problem at all. I encourage you not to listen to everybody saying set low ISOs. You've got to come back with the file. You've got to come back with the image. That's the main thing. Come back with the image. The software is amazing now and put these older files, you know, 14 years ago, goodness me. So put them through modern software and you'll be amazed. 60th F4 and the high setting is my church settings. Comment below. Um, I'm sure a lot of you got 5D Mark IIs, Mark Threes, and Mark IVs now. Tell me about the Mark IV file at 3200 ISO. I've tested it here with other people against this camera. Um, but I'd appreciate your comments. I hope that helps. Um, 12 minutes, we're on that one. Tell me if whether you like short or long videos as well, because I can give you as much information as you need. Okay, hope that helps. Have a good day.